Welcome back to Tiny Grimes Games, and I'm here with another Star Wars Destiny video, and I am super excited about draft. So today I wanted to look at the draft characters, not in constructed play, but evaluating them just for the sake of draft. So let's go ahead and do so. Let's start with the scavenger, the Jawa scavenger. Um, he's really interesting. What makes him amazing, of course, is that at six he really balances out what happens if I get, uh, say, a 15 cost character. Um, then I need to somehow come up with only 15 if I want to go three uh, characters. So the Jawa lets you do things like a nine and a six to go with that character. Um, he allows you to do things like uh, run uh, Lobot, Ketsu, and Jawa, as I saw someone run this past weekend. Uh, Mike, uh, yeah, talking about you. Uh, but the Jawa is interesting. Now, I kind of like him. I mean, he has two damage sides. That's pretty good. The problem is one costs a dollar. His ability is not great. Um, it's kind of nice that if a character is about to die, has already rolled out, used its upgrade, you can theoretically activate to get a dollar back. I saw somebody do that. It seemed promising. Uh, it can be really good with something like Imperial Inspection, having that disrupt side. Uh, the problem with six health is really, really low. Um, six health just isn't that much. And in a late game situation, if your opponent's been crafty and able to go with a character with, say, two upgrades on them, they can just roll in and kill Jawa. So the Jawa is not great. Um, but I feel like the Jawa is a little bit better in draft than it is in constructed. I've gotten to the point where six health is just too low in constructed. They just insta die, and there's nothing you can do about it because they can burst so hard. But in draft, um, there's so, there's sometimes some things you can do about it. So I think we're going to see the Jawa rising a bit in usage um, at only six. That's that's pretty good. All right, let's go to Anakin because Anakin is the card that is probably going to see the most play. Um, I was very worried that he might be too good in draft because if you look at him. As a constructed character, he's really good. He's got three two damage sides on him in a villain deck. You're going to have plenty of villain cards to discard. What I've been finding for draft, though, is that he's only decent. Um, I mean, he's definitely solid at 10, but his die isn't super scary. I've had lots of times where I've rolled a special or my opponent has rolled a special, and they haven't had a hero or a villain card. Now, that may just be new to the draft format, but I went out of my way to pick some bad villain cards just to have villain cards. So in a way, and it can both hurt my deck because I had bad villain cards in it. And then when I didn't have them, I looked even more foolish that I put these bad villain cards in, had already say discarded them to do a reroll or just didn't have any of this turn, then hit the special and was like, ah, Anakin, you have made me conflicted. Uh, he's definitely good. I think he's the best character out of these three characters, maybe. I actually think Ketsu might be better. Um, but for the cost, certainly, 10 lets you do a lot. Um, he's really flexible. But because of that, you're going to see a lot of people drafting blue. And so you need to be careful of that. That, like, blue, he dictates the fact that blue is going to be the, the most picked faction, I think. So go into the draft knowing that, that there's a chance... You may not play Anakin and be comfortable with that. If you get a pile of good red and yellow cards and you don't really get any blue cards, whatever. That's fine. You don't have to take Anakin. Uh, so just know that. He is good. He's probably the best of these four, but you don't have to take him. All right. Uh, let's move on to Ketsu. Ketsu, to me, is maybe the best. Um, she does have one less health. And she only has two damage sides. But like I said, Anakin is really more like two and a half and one of them's a pay side. Um, what makes Ketsu so amazing is that you can play a weapon on another character knowing that either A, that character is safe from being attacked or that once it dies, Ketsu gets the weapon. It's like it gives a weapon redeploy or it just gives that weapon redeploy in that it doesn't go away because the guy doesn't die. That al that ability may make her better than Anakin, actually. And I've been kind of 
leaning in that direction lately that maybe she's just straight up better than Anakin. She has one less health and she costs one more. So obviously the one more could be like a game changing moment where now it's not worth it, right? Because it's one more than Anakin and now you're you're you couldn't do what you wanted to do. So that part's dicey. But just like on their own, I think she might be better. This is in this is in draft, remember. In constructed, I still think Anakin is far superior. So many weapons have redeploy as it is. It doesn't matter um, that she has this ability. But I think in draft, where there's not a lot of redeploy weapons, I think Ketsu, I think she's the best of the characters. I haven't actually prioritized her. I used her in my sealed event, but not in my draft event. I t played Django instead of her. I think at one less, I would have actually rather played Ketsu. Um, then I could have, because I had to put the weapons on Django. He becomes the target. Whereas this way, I put the weapons on someone else, two other people, and then she's not the target. I, I think she might be the best of them all. All right. Well, let's move to Lobot. Um, yeah. So <laughs> Lobot only has one damage side for 10 with nine health, so he's like worse than Anakin in every way, except for he has a really cool special. The special is really solid. Uh, resolving one of your dice increases value by two. That happened to me. Took a two to a four. That's really strong. There's like we've talked about. There's not a ton of removal, so if you hit that, you, it's going to be pretty good. And it has a focus, which is also good in this format. So he's better than I initially thought he was when I first looked at him. I wrote him off as wow. Boy, if you get stuck with him, you're in big trouble. And you're not doing great, but he's not as bad as I thought he was. Uh, he can be especially good in, say, a mill deck where you, you know, make the mill side from a 1 to a 3. That can be really good. If you can give him Guardian, he can be strong. The problem is, I feel like Draft and the Battlefield, at least for me right now, is really murky. I don't feel like Battlefield mechanics are something I can rely on. I feel like there's something... That made me happen. And I'm like, yeah, cool, I've got the battlefield. But since I don't have a lot of battlefield cards in the deck, it feels like giving up dice and leaving them on the board just to give Lobot Guardian, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure that that's worth it, right? It's, it's one of the really tricky things with draft is battlefield mechanics are much tougher to predict um, with what you're drafting and how, how fast your deck is going to be. Uh, they're just really weird, and because of that, I don't love Lobot, but he's not as bad as I originally thought. I think if I had to rank them, um, it, not looking at their point costs, I'd probably say like Ketsu, Anakin, then Lobot, um, and then Jav, Java, Jawa, because he's only got six health. But each of their costs are so important. It's really the key to drafting is to know exactly the cost of the dudes in the draft packs. Um, so that you know, like, okay, I've got, you know, this and this. I've got an 8 and a 10. Um, or I, I have an 8 already, and I want to, I'm definitely running Ketsu because I got some cards for her. So that's 19. So what can I get? It's like 11. Oh, geez, there's an amazing 12. Oh, my goodness. You know what? Forget it. I'm just going to use Anakin instead because I, and I know now I can draft this 12. Um, that's really important. So that is the draft characters. Um, hopefully you found this video enlightening, and I'll see you next time on Tiny Grimes Games.